Hey everybody, it's, uh, it's Stevie here and welcome to the first video on Illustrator Basic Tools. In this video, I'll be going over four of the more fundamental tools of Illustrator. Those tools are the Zoom tool, the Hand tool, the Selection tool, and the Direct Selection tool. Okay, so uh, let's jump right in. Um, if you're brand new to Illustrator, this video will describe a bunch of tools like I just said. So firstly, launch the application and you should be greeted with uh, something like this. Uh, here you can, this is basically the start screen. Uh, if you're really starting from scratch, you'll probably go over to create new or you'll just open some other file that somebody's maybe given you. So assuming that we're starting from scratch, I'll uh, go over to create new. And you'll see that there's uh, a bunch of tabs here. So there's the recent tab, which shows all the recent AI files that you may have worked with. The save tab, which has a lot of saved templates that you may or may not have. I know the downstairs computers have a template that's 32 by 18 inches, which is the exact size cutting bed of, of uh, the laser cutter, so you know exactly what you're working with, as well as a bunch of other helpful templates. Maybe if you're making something that's paper related, they have uh, the copy paper template uh, and letter. But if they don't have anything you're looking for, you can always just pick a preset and uh, make make something of your own. So I'll name this uh, Stevie's random thing. Uh, and then I'll change the uh, units of measurement to inches because I grew up uh, using the customary units. I'm sorry, that's just what I'm used to. And I'll change the width and height to something ar totally arbitrary. Uh, we're not actually gonna use this template, but this just so you guys know what to do. Um, so that's about all the settings you can mess with now. Uh, later on, if, you, if you're more comfortable with it, you can go into the advanced settings and uh, mess with a couple stuff here. The only thing you would probably mess with is the color mode. Uh, I'm not really sure how CMYK works, so I'd probably use RGB, but I'm not going to change anything just yet. I'm just going to show you how you would create a document. So once you hit create, yeah, Illustrator will load a custom artboard that meets everything that you just uh, specified, but we're not actually going to use this. So let's say that we've already been given a file already pre-made to cut and you're just checking over somebody else's work so they can laser cut. That's actually quite common, especially if you're a peer instructor and you're working downstairs. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open a file that I pre-made that's also pretty arbitrary that doesn't really mean anything and we'll start from there. So everything that I'm going to walk through is dependent if you have the essentials mode in use. So uh, the, the mode and styles can be found up here. If you just click over on, uh, you know, it could say automation essentials or any of these words here, you can change it to essentials. And you certainly don't have to use essentials. You can use whatever you want, but uh, different, different styles will change the layout of how Illustrator works, but all of them should have the this toolbar on the left unless you uh, customize it to be somewhere else. But uh, everything here on is going to be using the essentials mode, so just bear that in mind. As you can see, there's a lot going on in this canvas. We'll start off with the hand and zoom tools located toward the end of the canvas, or not the end of the canvas, the uh, toolbar right here. So uh, these tools are really neat as you can easily navigate your artboard without the fear of accidentally moving anything and making sure you can see what you're working with. And, you know, that's really important because uh, someone could give you their AI file and you don't want to mess anything up. So we'll start with the zoom tool. So uh, the zoom tool does exactly what it sounds like. It zooms in and out. If you just click around, you should see that uh, you're zooming in centered on your mouse. Uh, if, you, uh, if you hold down your mouse, you'll slowly, slowly uh, increase the zoom magnification. You can see your exact magnification in the bottom left-hand corner. But uh, if you click and drag over to the left, you'll zoom out. And if you click and drag over to the right, you'll zoom in. Uh, going up and down when you're dragging won't really affect anything. Okay, so that's basically how the zoom tool works. Uh, and now we'll go over to the hand tool. To access the hand tool, what you have to do is uh, press and hold uh, one of your clicking buttons on the zoom tool and you should have access to the hand tool. And then you can just release there. The hand tool uh, basically allows you to navigate around the canvas relatively easily, like so. And uh, 
it's pretty easy to use, but the only weird thing about it is if you notice, whenever I click and drag down, I'm actually going up, click and drag up, I'm going down, and uh, same thing with left and right. So everything's actually flipped a little bit, but it's not very hard to get used to, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. So using the hand tool uh, in tandem with uh, the zoom tool, you should be able to be able to focus just about on anything in an artwork artboard, which this is really useful because uh, this is actually using the 32 by 18 template, so we can just focus on things uh, separately at a time. And there is a lot of uh, stuff going on here. So yeah. All right. So now we're about ready to move on to the selection tools. So we'll start off with the normal selection tool and we'll reset the magnification to about 25%. So um, the selection tool allows you to change properties relating to whole groups or objects. If you select an object either by clicking inside or just uh, the path in general, you should see that when you do this, uh, you're, you're given the properties of that object. So uh, every single object, no matter what it is, has two properties uh, that are always going to be there. That's the transform property and the appearance property. So if I click on this heart, it has its own transform and appearance properties. Some objects may have more than those two properties, but uh, generally speaking, every object should have a transform and appearance property. And with the direct selection tool, you're able to change everything about um, those two uh, properties as a whole. So uh, if I click and drag and highlight both this triangle and the heart, you should see that the appearance uh, property isn't really specified because they have two very different appearances. This, this heart is, has a red inside and a green stroke and different stroke size and the transform settings are relating to its placement as a whole and its width and height as a whole. So if you change that there, you'll have uh, everything will shrink basically. So uh, that's just important to know. Generally, you're gonna wanna work with uh, one object at a time or if you wanna uh, work with everything at a time, you can always hit Control A uh, to highlight everything right now and then you can shrink everything uh, at the same time in case somebody brings you a file that's a little too large, but just like that. Okay, so we'll move on to, I guess, just this heart so I can explain a little bit more about the transform and appearance settings. So if you look at the transform settings right now, uh, you'll see a couple things. You'll see X, Y, W, and H, and we'll start there. So the X and Y correlates to its position over on the artboard. So um, the origin of this artboard and every artboard actually start, starts at the top left corner. So that means the more farther right you go, the higher the number the X value will be and the farther lower you go, the higher the Y value will be. So if we decrease this X value to be, let's say 15, we should see that the heart moves left and it does. And the same thing with the Y value, if we make this uh, seven, it should move just a little higher, just like that. And you'll also notice that there's this little rectangle thing right here. Uh, this is actually how you control uh, the reference point. And what a reference point is, is it's the point of uh, the, it is a reference point of this uh, X and Y coordinate. So as you can see, we're actually referencing this bottom right uh, little point here. And you can reference any of these points in the middle. And generally the reference point is in the middle, but you can make it be wherever you want. So if I wanted this hard to be at origin, I can make, I can choose the top left reference point to be zero, zero, and it moves and it snaps right onto the origin. And you'll also notice that if you change the reference point, the uh, position should change automatically to match whatever that reference point is. So if we're referencing now by the top right reference point, uh, the X value just changed, which makes sense. So we also have W and H, which stands for width and height. And uh, you can also control this accordingly by entering different numerics. So right now, I have uh, this little paperclip thing without a slash, which means anything that happens to width, something will also happen to height to meet that ratio that it's currently in. So if I make the width smaller, the height will also be smaller and vice versa. So if I click here, then maintain width and height proportions is not on. So if I restore this back to its old setting, it'll just get wider, but it will not get any taller or anything like that. And 
like you're probably used to, you've probably uh, been wondering if you can actually do this by hand. And yes, you can. You can move uh, this heart by hand and you can also increase the size by hand by just uh, using any of these points like you're probably used to from Ward. But you can also maintain width and height proportions if you're, uh, if you're trying to increase the size uh, by holding shift and increasing uh, or decreasing the size. So that's just a little helpful to know. And then lastly, we have this idea of uh, this little angle-looking thing right here, which actually changes the angle. And it has uh, Illustrator gives you a lot of preset angles uh, in increments of 30 that you may find useful, or you can enter a custom angle of your own, like let's say 73. So yeah. And then we also have, uh, you can also flip it along the horizontal or vertical axis if you wanted to. So just keep that in mind. So now we'll go on to the appearance settings. The appearance settings uh, are exactly what they sound like they are. They, they give the actual shape appearance. So we have three things we can work with here. We have, uh, we have fill, which controls the inside of the object and what color it is. So you can change its color to any of the presets that Illustrator gives you here or you can make your own color here by adjusting the CMYK settings, or if you had the RGB settings, you can adjust those accordingly, or just select something on the spectrum here. So I'll go ahead and change it to blue, just so you guys can keep an eye on what it would look like, or you, it also has like weird nifty patterns, just like that. And then the stroke is uh, can be seen as the outline of any object, or, or the path of any object. And if you haven't figured it out already, a path is basically uh, some sort of line connecting uh, two different points, and a point being uh, just just uh, anything that you highlight here. So um, you can have a path be between two points, like a little little line segment, or you can be a path uh, being closed, just like this triangle where there are three points here: one, two, three, and there's one singular closed path where it goes on for an infinite amount of time. And so that path, uh, you can change the stroke size, which is the uh, line width, and you can change the line color. So right now it's green and it's at a size of nine. So we'll go ahead and change that too, to let's say red. And then we'll also change the size to something a little smaller, just like that. And you can hardly see it, but it's still there. And then the last thing we have is opacity. So the opacity uh, is changing how transparent or opaque the object is as a whole. So uh, if it's at 100%, the object is completely opaque. And if it's at 0%, it's completely transparent. Anything in between is, is somewhere in the middle. And you can specify uh, that percentage however you want. And you can also, oh, never mind. But yeah, just in case you want to change any of the colors, just remember you have to press these little rectangles here. Okay. So uh, that's basically the, uh, the selection tool in a nutshell. Now you may be wondering, well, what's the direct selection tool uh, do? And I'm glad you asked. So hopefully everything else is clear so far, but uh, if you're wondering how you would augment only a part of a path or an object, the answer lies within the direct selection tool. You can delete paths between two points, just like this. And uh, you can see that you're only working with parts of paths or parts of, uh, of points within a singular object. So in here to demonstrate really what I mean is you can isolate this one little corner right here and if you look at the transform settings, it's no longer relating to the entire rectangle. It's now relating to this little point right here where you can change the individual points location. So you can either do that by specifying a number here or just clicking and dragging just like this, and the shape will change accordingly because everything was connected before, so it has to still be connected. So that's just helpful to know, just in case only uh, some part of an object or image that you're working with may be a little off, uh, you would want to use the direct selection tool, or uh, it comes in handy a lot more with the pen tool, which I'll go over more in the next video. But that's basically just about everything I have to cover in this video. Uh, hopefully everything was pretty self-explanatory or pretty easy to follow. But if not, go ahead and send me a message here on Slack or come hound me down. I'm pretty friendly. So yeah, just, uh, just let me know.